Hi, Dr. John Quackenbush here with my patient Donna Betcher. She has undergone some of my treatment protocols, brain-based therapy with exercise with oxygen, uh, manipulation under anesthesia, and I wanted to just interview her uh, a little bit about what we did together. So Donna, um, how old are you? 65. 65. That's amazing. You're a very young 65, I have to say. How do you like that, Gary? Oh, you're a nice guy. So anyway, you know, uh, when you came in to me at first, you know, you pretty much were a mess. I was a mess. And um, you were under the impression that you had uh, fibromyalgia, or at least you were given the diagnosis of fibromyalgia. And uh, who gave you that diagnosis and what did they do? That came from the Mayo Clinic. And uh, basically, they just told me to take some drugs. Now, which Mayo Clinic? Uh, the one in Phoenix. Okay. And do you know which drugs they told you to take? They told me that uh, something like Lyrica or Amitriptyline would help. Okay. So and I did go on the Amitriptyline. And it really didn't do anything. I was still in a lot of pain. I was having muscle spasms and a lot of pain. I gotcha. So, from the beginning, when, when you finally decided I better go see somebody about what's happening with my body, and you getting the diagnosis, I mean, what was your life like up to the point where you got your diagnosis? Well, there were times in my life when I could hardly walk, and I was in so much pain. And there were even, I hate to admit it, there were some, some times when I didn't think I could cope with the pain, and I told my husband, because I was taking some Vicodin for pain, and I didn't want to get addicted, and I was nervous about that. And I had him keeping the Vicodin for me, but I actually said to him one night, you better keep this because I don't know I, how much longer I can deal with this pain. So I was, I was actually having some thoughts that were kind of scary, and I never felt that way in my life, but I did because I was in so much pain. I mean, were they as bad to uh, maybe suicidal tendencies? I think... I had a few nights where it was that bad that I didn't think I could cope. I was, I was crying to my husband, I don't think I can, I just don't think I can live like this with this much pain because the spasms in my back were just, they were the worst thing I had experienced. So I was, you know, I was kind of at the end of my rope when I came to see you. Now, you, you know, you gave the medication to your husband to dispense. Not because you had a problem or you were addicted, because you were no. afraid you were going to get addicted. Yeah, I so, didn't want to get addicted. I probably only took out of a bottle, I might have taken over several weeks period, maybe six pills or something like that. I was not addicted, but I didn't want to get addicted. I know the danger of that, and I was very afraid of, of the uh, narcotic medications. I didn't want to abuse them at all. But then I got to the point where I thought, well, you know, if I'm in too much pain, then if I decide to take a whole bottle because I can't deal with it. So it's sad to feel that way, but I, because I'm a happy person, mm -hmm. generally, I'm right, very right. happy. But I was just at the end of my rope with pain. And you know, I want to commend you on two things right now. Number one, the knowledge that if the drugs weren't working that you could become addicted even mm -hmm. at prescription levels. Mm -hmm. And uh, number two is that most people will go ahead and take that medication, number one, because it's prescribed by a guy in a white coat. And they just want to be out of pain and they just numb their lives down. And you know, you sort of dealt with the symptoms that your body was letting you know that there's something wrong and, you, and so you would curtail doing things rather than taking drugs and then trying to continue on with your life. That's so, you know, exactly that's a, right. a great thing. Mm -hmm. So, tell me about your life, you know, before coming to see me. I mean, I know you love to exercise. I know that you're a, a, I was a dancer. dancer. Mm -hmm. I was a dancer. And I, I used to love to do jazzercise or, you know, whatever, just to keep active. but. I started having so many problems with mus mostly muscle problems. At least I thought that's what it was. That I had to give most of that up, and I wasn't, you know, I wasn't doing much of anything. And I really let myself. I never got fat, but I let myself go physically. I'm, I'm lucky that I don't get huge, but I just don't get huge. But I was really out of shape, and now I'm working on getting back in shape. And so, I mean, you just weren't able to exercise. No, I couldn't. I couldn't. I could, you know, I couldn't even take a long walk. And and did the medical doctors tell you you needed to exercise, or did, what did they want you to do? Just take the drugs? No, yeah, they they. I don't think they knew what to do, so they just would write scripts. Mm -hmm. And so, what we've done is we've done chiropractic, mm -hmm. which you really had a hard time accepting the idea that you were going to get your spine adjusted. Correct? I never thought I would. I never liked the idea, right. so I had to work on that for a while. Right. You helped me see the light. 
Well, yeah, we did, and, and you know, we you had a few concerns about having your neck adjusted, and we went ahead and did some specialized tests that allow you to relax, and that you knew there'd be no complications. Exactly. And that was an ultrasound of your carotid arteries. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, we went through with the um, oxygen. What did you think when I told you you needed oxygen? I thought I got it when I breathed, but I discovered I need more, and it really has made a difference. So uh, I actually invested in my own oxygen machine for my husband and I because I got so much benefit from it. I wanted to have it more than just when I see you. Right, and you know what I like about this because it's like drinking water. You know, you, you can't just drink water to get well and then stop. You, you've got to drink water and you've got to breathe oxygen. Mm -hmm. And so tell us a little bit about your life now. What, what are you doing well, now? Well, it's amazing because now I'm, uh, well, I exercise six days a week. I do, uh, I belong to Curves. I'm a member of Curves, but now Curves has a thing where you can do Zumba. So I'm doing Curves machines, Zumba dance, which is salsa, like that. And now I'm doing that uh, three days a week. Then I'm taking a Zumba class at our community center, which is 55 minutes of aerobic hard exercise and I never would have thought I'd be able to do that again. And I'm you know, I'm building myself up to the point where I'm able to, to do that too. Then I, I walk with my husband and our dog and we walk about fifty minutes and we walk fast. And so I built exercise into my life every day. I usually give myself one day off. That's excellent. Sunday to, Sunday to rest. And then there's one thing I did forget to mention uh, we got to a point where we were doing well, but you needed a little extra push, and that was the manipulation under anesthesia. And uh, oh, I think that a huge. I think it had a huge impact on me. I, I noticed it. Well, after the MUA, I stopped having the muscle spasms in my back, and those. Of course, they had started getting better, but the MUA really made a difference in that, and also freed up my shoulders because mm -hmm. I didn't have any. I guess I have very little, um, what do you call, what's the word? You range know? of motion. I have very little range of motion, and I have so much better now after having that done. So how long have we been treating together? Well, I know I had the MUA two months ago, mm -hmm. a little over two months ago, but we, I think you and I have been, uh, it's been maybe, what I was it, maybe four months? Four or five months, something like that? Yeah, at least four or five months. Yeah, but something like that. This last month you've only come in twice. Yeah, I think maybe it has been like five months, something like that. So in the beginning when you were at your worst and someone said, you know, in five months I could have you better, what would you have thought? I never believed that I'd be back to doing dance in Zumba. And because uh, I was feeling much older than my 65 years, you know, I'm surprised that I feel so well now. Well, I'm really happy for you. Thank you I for doing too. this. All right. I'm so glad I did it. Good deal. <laughs>